um, what is repentance from dead works? Have you ever asked yourself what is what, what does the Bible mean by saying the word repentance from dead works, which is spoken in the book of Hebrews uh, six one? Now you have to understand one thing that uh, in the book of Hebrews the author the author who i believe it's paul is written in the king james i wonder why people argue about this uh who is uh, paul yeah let me use paul yeah the author of hebrews uh he sounds several warnings about uh, false faith and addresses the problem of immaturity among believers who had formerly followed the jewish customs although these believers should be should have been at a higher level of maturity to the point that they should have been teachers themselves they were still infants in the faith and were slow to learn let's just check here hebrews 5:11 of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing you see what paul is saying let me use the word paul if you learn to argue we can argue about the the author of Hebrews later on. Um, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hmm. Now, here the author of Hebrews urges these believers that uh, they should leave the elementary doctrines of Christ. Let me now go to this Hebrews uh, 6.1. Okay, Hebrews 6 verses 1 look at this therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on to perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards god and of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying of hands and of resurrection from the dead and of eternal judgment this we will if god per permit now you, you you may wonder why why is god saying this he's basically talking about mature stop crying all the time oh i lied yesterday oh, now god is going to send me to hell you're like a baby is it's like for example if a baby uh, uh, for example if 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 the father has told the baby please don't uh, I should not find you uh, watching TV and you're supposed to be doing something else. Come on. A baby, even if he has done all the homework, has done everything, and the father comes in, they will always try to throw the remote and say, oh, my dad told me not to watch the remote. Come on. Come out from that. You're already mature. You're a big person now. If it's remote, you have to understand if it's something that you're supposed to do or you're not supposed to do, and even if you do something which is wrong, should you be afraid of your father all the time? You should mature. This is what, this is what uh, Paul is trying to tell these people. Come on, mature up. Stop being babies. You understand that uh, the dead works uh, to be repented of are performed uh, by those who are separated from the life of God. If you're separated from the life of God, then uh, you're the ones who had to do these kind of works. Let me show you Ephesians 4 verses 18. See here. It says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who are being First, peeling, uh, feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. 
So these people who are separated from God are the ones who should be repenting from their dead works. Now, immediately you have already repented from your dead works. Now, should you be fighting yourself and asking, oh, is, is God okay with me on this, on this, on this, on this, and things like that? Should you? Should you be worried too much? Should you be worried and say, oh, something good happens to those who do good to God? You know, God must be punishing me because of what I'm doing. I must have displeased God in this. I must have tried to, uh, I must try to appease God in one way or another. My God must be angry in this and that. Maybe yesterday I didn't go to church. Can I make a bigger offering this Sunday because I didn't give a, 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 a sacrifice last Sunday? I didn't give an offering. You see, those are dead works. You're keeping on crying. You're a cry baby. These works may be religious in nature, but they are dead in that they cannot bring spiritual life. Such works may appear may appear virtuous and even sincere, sincerely pious, but they are not rooted in faith in Christ or love of God and are so just useless in terms of salvation and eternal life. Repenting of one's own works is foundational to trusting Christ and is thus called an elementary doctrine of Christ. When Paul tells you, get off from those elementary doctrines, it's the things that you're thinking, oh, I've done this, maybe God will be this, I've done this. Come on, you're already away from that. Get off from those dead works. Okay, those elementary doctrines, Hebrews 6 1. Now, in the context of uh, the book of Hebrews, the specific dead works to which the author refers are the Levitical rituals that the professing Jewish Christians had trusted in before salvation in Christ. This Offerings, burnt offering, you have to uh, do this kind of burnt offering, a sin offering, meal offering, trespass offering, peace offerings. All these kind of offerings are the ones that the Jewish people had trusted before uh, salvation of Christ. And offering sacrifices and performing rituals never saved anyone. But rather, they only served to make a person ceremonially clean. Okay, or oh, just generally being clean, and that's it. Because the Bible tells us about this in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 9, verse 13, and I'll read to 14, so that you can see it was just to make you generally clean, but not clean as clean of salvation. <laughs> see, for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies unto the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? This, these offerings were only cleansing the outer cover of you. But Christ, Christ Jesus, is cleansing you all through and giving you eternal life. You should note that uh, the reference to dead works in this passage as well, this time clearly is linked to the works of the law. So if you try to do all these dead works, you're basically going back to the law. If you keep on saying, oh, I must have displeased God. How can I please God now? I'm uh, God is angry with me. What can I... Come on, you're going back to this law. And the law pointed us for the need, okay? This law, it pointed us to the need for Christ, okay? We saw how much we, we are so evil and what we have done. And the law was basically showing us who we are and pointing us, now this man is the one who is going to save us. Remember in the book of Galatians uh, 3.20. Galatians 3.24 It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith is come, we are no longer under our schoolmaster. 
For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Are you now under this law? No. Stop fearing all these dead works. Stop serving these dead works and saying, Oh, it's because I did this. I think God is feeling this. But no. Now, when you serve the law, you're going back to this one. The most the, the the offering sacrifices. While we know very well that Jesus came and we are no longer under this law. Okay? This law pointed us to the need for Christ. And it is served as a vital purpose for revealing the presence of sin in people's lives. Only the law could be able to uh, show us a, a, a sin in our lives. Romans. Romans 7 verse 7. Okay. Romans 7 7. It says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? You know, there are people who say, okay, then why was the law there in the first place? No. God forbid. The, so the law was not sin. Nay. I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law said, thou shalt not covet. And unless the law came, I could not have known my need for Christ. That's why the law came. Are you seeing the point? So the law is not, is, is, is not sin. Yes, the law was there for a purpose. And also in the book of First Timothy, uh, 1 verses 8 it tells us the same thing concerning this but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man so the moment you are righteous get out from the law the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient to tell them what to tell them how they should be godly are you seeing the point? For the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for homongers, for them that defile themselves with the mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for prejured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which is committed to my trust. This is Paul saying, so the law is not for you. If you're saved, you are no longer under this law. Now you are under Christ. So this law is to tell someone, you have, you have stolen, you're a sinner. You have killed, you're a sinner. It is to tell somebody, this is the rule. This is how you should live. But immediately they have known, oh, I've lied. I didn't know that was a sin. Now I know lying is a sin. And now they can, the law can direct them. So what should I do? Trust in Jesus. Are you seeing the point? Trust in Jesus so that you can be forgiven. You see the goodness of the law? And that's why you should not go back to this law and try to say, Oh, I've lied or I've done this and this and I'm a, and I'm, and I'm a Christian. The Bible tells us that in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You can be condemned to hell after you're in Christ Jesus because you're no longer under the law. <laughs> Are you seeing the point? You can only die if you're under the law. If you're saved, you're no longer under the law. Are you getting the point? Is it making some sense? So the first century Jewish followers of Jesus had already uh, turned, turned from their trust in Levitical works to trust in Christ's death and resurrection. In their pursuit of spiritual maturity, they did not need to keep returning to that basic teaching of the faith. It was time to move on. Okay, it was time to move on. Why? Because the Mosaic law laid the foundation. Moses was only laying the foundation for the Christian faith. And those who had formerly kept the law needed to move on to embrace the truth of God's revelation in Christ. And if these professing Jewish Christians uh, packed themselves on the foundation of repentance from their works, they would cease maturing in faith. And the elementary truths of God's words, they were to move beyond. Also, those elementary included faith in God. This was basically the instruction about cleansing rites and the laying of hands and the resurrection of the dead. 
and eternal judgment. So Moses was only laying a foundation. Okay? Mm. Moses was only laying a foundation. And all these teachings were learned under the old covenant and it was now incumbent upon the Jewish Christians to move on. My friend, you're already saved. Move on from the things of the law. Okay? It was incumbent for them, for those Jewish Christians back then, and even Christians right now, to move on to the fuller teachings of Christ under the new covenant. And uh, the right of Hebrews was encouraging these believers to press on in the faith of Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the law, not to return to the law. Okay, don't go back. Don't return to the law, which he warns against. In, uh, like we have read in Hebrews 6, uh, 6, uh, 6, 4 to 6, remember? So, it's a time that we need to walk away, my friends. Just like the Jewish believers needed to see the law as the foundation it was and to recognize it as a shadow and a symbol that pointed to the reality in Christ, Jesus had fulfilled the law and given them something better. Something better. Okay? Because the Bible says we have now something better. Remember in Hebrews 8 uh, all the way to 10. As they grew in the faith, they should partake of the solid food which is available to them. Solid food. Do we have some solid food right now? Hebrews 5, 12. I just read to you, but let me go back there so that I can show you. Uh, I don't know if I read this one, but let me show you. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you, you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You people, you're supposed to be teachers. But you still need people to go and teach you over and over and over concerning the same thing. And I become such as of need of milk. You're still babies and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk, anyone who is still thinking about, oh, salvation point, and you're already saved, is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he's a baby but strong meat belongs to them that are full of age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil hmm are you a baby are you a baby christian are you still crying there and say oh lord please i don't know what to do oh this and this and this are you still crying just like the Christians in the book of Hebrews, we can become stagnated in the faith if we don't watch huh? and fail to grow. Instead of focusing solely on the basic uh, tenets of the faith, all Christians should seek to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Seek to grow. Peter told us, let's let's seek to, to grow. Second Peter, um, Second Peter, uh, 3 verses 18 Peter tells us to grow okay but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be the glory both now and forever amen grow the first step of faith is to stop trying to please God with dead works. Stop telling God, oh God, is this good now? Are you accepting me? God, are you punishing me? This is, this is, no, God is not doing all these things. You're already away from this. If you're trying to do this, how are you going to atone for this? How are you going to atone for all this? You already atone them. You can go back to this. And if you keep on behaving like that, you're a baby. Okay? You're a baby. So stop trying to please God with dead works, rituals, and hollow forms of religion. Trying to keep the law cannot save anyone. Don't try to keep the law. Trying to be so good on the law, it will not save you. Move on, my friends. Move on. What does the Bible say in Romans 3.10? As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Okay? 
No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. So, if you know there is no one righteous, the Bible has said we are not all righteous. We are only going to heaven through Christ's righteousness. So, you are trying to, you're trying to do everything you can to be righteous. How now? <laughs> How now? Look at verse 20 here. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law teaches us, tells us this is what sin is. Okay? And Ephesians, Ephesians uh, uh, 2 verses 8 to 9, it tells us that for by grace are you saved through faith. You're not saved through law. You're saved through faith. Law only told, tells you your, your sins, but it cannot save you. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's not about the good things that you're trying to do. Oh, I must try to appease God. No, you're not saved by appeasing God or this and this. The law is only trying to point us to who? To Jesus Christ, to tell us we can do nothing. By grace are you saved through faith in Jesus and is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, dead works, lest any man should boast. Stop those things of the works of the law and move on, my friends. Just like the first recipients of the book of Hebrews, we should move on to maturity. Move on to maturity in Christ. And so, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. The Bible tells us we will when we move move out from the basic doctrines, we will go to some further understandings. Uh-huh. We will understand new things. Are you ready to learn new things in Jesus? Stop being a crybaby. Okay? And this we will do if God permits. Okay? If we this all these things we will do if God tells us, okay, go and this do this or do that we will if god permits but if for now he's not permitted anyone okay for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the holy ghost and have tasted the good word of god and the power of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify them themselves the son of god afresh and put into an open shame this one does not mean backsliding. It is says you'll be like, now what else can we do to you if you're not growing? You are a baby and you want to stay there. What else can we do? Even if we feed you and feed you and you don't want to grow, there's nothing which can be done to you. You'll stagnate. That's what the Bible is saying. My friends, are you even saved? The gospel saves. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood. Many people may ask if Jesus could have drowned in Galilee or crossing the river Jordan or things like that. Could there be no salvation? Or maybe he was strangled by those Pharisees. I don't think so. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. There had to be blood shed because Leviticus 17, 11 tells us the life of every flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the uh, uh, blood that atones for the soul. Now, when you hear these words from Leviticus they tell you that there needs to be blood to atone for our sins. But it's not just any blood. It is the blood of an innocent being. You're guilty. I'm guilty. I can't atone for your sins. You can't atone for mine. So we had to have someone who is clean and innocent to atone for us. And that is Jesus. 2,000 years ago, while you were still sinners, Christ did this great thing, which you call the good news, the gospel. He died for us so that whosoever will believe in him, will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Do you believe that Jesus died for you? If you do, my friends, all you need to do is just to confess what you have believed to Jesus Christ and tell him that, you see, Jesus, you died for my sins, you were buried and you rose again. As the Bible says, please I accept 
this payment of sin, this atonement by faith, because like I've read to you, it is by faith that you receive this, this, this payment of sin, this salvation. Grace is given to you by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And uh, you only confess what you know. First, make sure you understand. Because if you confess what you don't know, then you're a liar. That's why sinner's prayer doesn't save. Because sinner's prayer just confesses things which you don't know. But once you understand the gospel and you confess, that's the time you get saved. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have understood something. And if you're out there and you're still uh, crying, baby, please get away from that. If you enjoyed these videos, please give them a like. And also you can uh, share to your friends to be able to understand. And also subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell to watch more videos which you post every day. And also you can uh, check on uh, our description below. We have a couple of other channels outside YouTube which you can also go and check and be blessed and also share to your friends. God bless you and have a good time.